composition is another method of combining functions. So if I have two functions, right, that means we've already checked that they pass the vertical line test, each x has a unique y, um, then the composite function denoted f open dot g, right, we read this f compose with g, it's not multiplication because that dot, as you can see, is hollow, okay? That is f of g of x. So what does that mean we do? That means we substitute g of x in for f of x, okay? And the domain of this function composition is all numbers in the domain such that um, g of x is in the domain of f of x. So let's practice combining some functions. So let's say I have f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x plus 3. So if I want to find f composed with g of x, I like to rewrite that personally as f of g of x because that reminds me I need to substitute g of x in for x. That gives me my function f of x, which is just the most basic quadratic, and I plug in g of x for x, so I have x plus 3 squared. That means I need to FOIL that out. FOIL being first, outer, inner, last. It's a way to make sure that each term of each of these binomials, binomials is multiplied by each other. So that gives me x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. I have x squared plus 6x plus 9 is my new function. This is a quadratic, so its domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And I want to find f composed with g of 2. And I can do that by substituting in 2 to my new function. So if I have f of g of 2, that means I have 2 squared plus 6 times 2 plus 9. That gives me 4 plus 12 plus 9, which is 25. Let's try another function composition, this time the other way. If I have g of f of x, that means I'm plugging f of x into x for g. So g of f of x equals 4x minus 1 minus 1 squared plus 5. See what I did? I substituted in f of x for x in g. I need to FOIL that out as well. That gives me 16x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 1 plus 5. So g of f of x equals 16x squared minus 8x plus 6. So I need to go ahead and uh, solve for part 2. I want to know what this answer is going to be for negative 2. So if I have g of f of x equals, not x in this case, but negative 2, I have 16 times negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 plus 6. That gives me 16 times 4 plus 16 plus 6. So I have 64 plus 16 plus 6. That gives me a total of 86. Next, I want to talk about uh, symmetry about the y-axis. So let's take a look at our function y equals x squared minus 9. So this is a parabola. And parabolas are symmetric through their vertex, which is the lowest point or the highest, right? So we can see that if we took this parabola and we fold it in half along the y-axis, it's symmetrical, just like a butterfly. Butterflies are symmetrical down the middle. Um, We have two um, x-intercepts in our point, right, 
here they are. They are when x is 3, y is 0, and when x is negative 3, y is 0. So these are two x-intercepts, okay? We can call this type of function that's symmetric about the y-axis an even function. And even functions are functions if f of x equals f of negative x. So why don't we go ahead and prove this for our graph, which is the function f of x equals x squared minus 9. Now we can already see that it's symmetrical because we're looking at its graph, but I want to use the proof. So let's take f of negative x. So that means I'm going to substitute negative x into my function. That gives me f of negative x equals x squared minus 9, and this is the same as f of x. So because f of x and negative x, f of negative x are even, are equal, this is an even function. When something has symmetry about the origin, that's a little bit different, that's what we call an odd function. So why don't we go ahead and graph y equals x cubed. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 8. So it's a little bit off the graph. When x is negative 1, y is negative 1. When x is negative 2, y is negative 8. So here we have our beautiful ooh, y equals x cubed. Uh, friendly reminder that its domain is all real numbers and its range is all real numbers, okay? So we can see that if we rotated this graph 180 degrees, our graph would look the same. So we have the point on our graph when x is 2, y is 8, and when x is negative 2, y is negative 8. And if I was just to rotate this around the origin, which is the point zero zero, we would see that these points stay on our graph. We say this function is an odd function because it's symmetric about the origin, okay? And one way to prove this is if f of negative x equals negative f of x. So if I have f of x equals x cubed, the negative f of x would be negative x cubed. So I've got one half done. Next, I need to take f of negative x. So I'm going to substitute negative x in for x cubed. Well, negative x cubed is going to give me negative x cubed. So because I have that negative f of x and f of negative, sorry, that's supposed to look like a negative, negative x are equal, we could say this is an odd function. So... Just to summarize, something is an even function if f of x equals f of negative x, and something is an odd function if f of negative x equals negative f of x. Note, this is really important, that not all functions have to be even or odd. Um, some can be neither. That means that it has no uh, symmetry about the y-axis or the origin. So why don't we determine whether the following functions are even or odd functions. Let's write our rules down. Remember a function is even if f of x equals f of negative x and a function is odd if negative f of x equals f of negative x. So the first place to start is going to be substituting in a negative x. So if I have 5 negative x to the fourth plus 7 negative x squared minus 2, I get that f of negative x equals 5. Negative x to the fourth is going to be a positive x to the fourth. Negative x squared is going to be a positive uh, x squared. I have minus 2. Note that f of negative x, what we found, is the same as f of x. So this function is even. Let's try another example. Let's say I have f of x equals 2x to the fifth minus 4x plus 5. Again, the first thing we want to do is we want to substitute in a negative x. That gives me 2 negative x to the fifth minus 4 times negative x plus 5. That gives me f of negative x equals 2 
sorry, negative x to the fifth plus 4x plus 5. Okay. Let's take a look. So f of negative x doesn't equal f of x. So now we know it's not even. But let's take a look at what negative f of x is. That would be negative 2x to the fifth minus 4x minus 5. Is negative f of x equal to f of negative x? No, because the sign on our 5 is opposite. So this is not odd. So if it's not even and it's not odd, it's neither. And we wouldn't have known that unless we checked both. One more example, let's take a look at 3x over x squared minus 1. I'm going to take a look at f of negative x. That gives me negative, sorry, 3 times negative x over negative x squared minus 1. So I'm going to have negative 3 over x squared minus 1. Sorry, negative 3x over x squared minus 1. That means I can go ahead and pull out this negative that I have on my top right here. So I have negative 3x over x squared minus 1. Ah, so f of x doesn't equal f of negative x. But let's take a look at negative f of x. That would give me negative 3x over x squared minus 1. So because f of negative x equals negative f of x, this function is odd.